Thank you, Professor Koo. Uh, our last speaker is Chol H. Lee. Uh, he is Vice President and Managing Director of Aon Fire Protection Engineering, uh, Chicago, Illinois, formerly Shermer, as I said. Uh, he re he uh, received his, uh, his uh, graduate degree uh, from the University of Maryland, again, a very well-known school of fire protection in the U.S., and, pro uh, uh, and has had not only experience as a, as a building code consultant, but he also worked for the state of California as the uh, state fire marshal as a state fire marshal for over four and a half years. Uh, he's currently managing four super tall projects, uh, uh, all of which are more than 100 stories, which include one of the Lote, one of those many Lote towers. Uh, the, uh, Joel's uh, talk is called Fire and Life Safety Features Being Provided in the Super Tall Buildings in Korea. Please put your hands together for Joel. Good afternoon. Uh... Uh, we passed the lunch hour, um, so just be patient, another 20 minutes, then we're going to have lunch, so. Uh, so I don't know how I... Uh, uh, currently, we are doing a support building projects in Korea, which is Busan Lotte Town, and as project, confidential project, and uh, Lotte Jamsil Super Tower, and uh, Seoul Light Tower. The basis for fire and life safety for uh, those projects is the primary code is 2009 Korean Building Code, and also we use 2009 IBC as a supplemental. And where the KBC does not provide specific requirement, and the IBC requirements were applied. So for example, the Korean Building Code doesn't have the occupant load factor. So we used IBC occupant load factor for uh, the analyzing, the exiting the, those buildings. And also in some cases, the IBC may conflict with the KBC or impose requirements anew. In this case, the design team has made a decision proposal for these specific cases that reflect the review and judgment on the direction to proceed. And for example, in this case, the IBC allows one hour the fire rating and sprinkler, like a water curtain things, but KBC does not allow. So in the KBC, there are so many atriums in the building, then we have to comply with the KBC, which is fire shutters around the openings. There's one of the examples. The fire and safety master plan we provide on those buildings is we're designing the fire sprinkler system, a fire alarm system, a smoke control system, and the fire resistance rating, and the exiting analysis and a fire department access. Then I would like to focus on the items that are being issued after 9-11 event on those high-rise buildings, which are firefighter service elevators, and a fire command center, and a refuge floors, and light bulb system. Firefighter access, as you all know, there are was conflict between firefighter and the building occupants in the stairs. So buildings in design and career, we have um, two dedicated firefighter elevators with pressurized vestibule. See those two shafts with pressurized vestibule. And also we propose wider stairs, which is 1,500 millimeters, which satisfies both code, the IBC and KBC. The KBC only requires 1,200 millimeters, and also we analyze exiting calculations, so 1,500 millimeter meets the IBC requirement as well. Then fire command center. The IBC requires fire command center in the high-rise buildings. So those projects, the Busan Lotte Town, there are two fire command centers, one for primary, 
one for secondary. And S project, also one for primary, one for secondary. Then Lutte Jamshil Tower is a little bit different. There are one primary fire command center in the tower, and there are another fire command center in the podium area, which is for the primary for retail, and also that fire command center will be used the secondary for the tower. And also the tower has four sub command center for each occupancies, like retail, business, office tail, then hotel. And KBC also requires compartmentations. The fire drones every 3,000 square meter and 10th floor and below, and the 1,500 square meter at 11th and above. As you see, uh, there are one big fire compartmentation and the core, another fire compartmentation. And also KBC requires smoke compartmentation which every 1,000 square meter and each floor. So in this case, we have a uh, two, actually three smoke zones. Those zones are separate by a smoke barrier or smoke draft curtain and a fire barrier. And refuge floors. And the KBC requires refuge floors every 25 and 30 floors in the high rise building, which is defined 50 stories, or 200 meter higher buildings. So those buildings, Jamshil, we have a five, so Light Tower five and Busan Lotte Town, have five refuge floors is provided. The refuge floor is the floor plan, one of the projects we are working on. The Korean Building Code requires stair separation at the refuge floors, which means, as you see on the stairs here and there, people egress using stairs and coming down and go out to the refuge floors. And then once they come in, they do have a separate two entrance. So they separate here. This is for um, the avoiding Stag effect. It's so all the Korean project typical is applied. Then the other a sensitive issue from the architect's terrible point of view and the owner side to estimate refuge area, how we calculate, how we estimate refuge area. There's no design criteria at all so far. So what we have done is, we have a total occupant load, the code basis from IBC, based on occupant load factor in the IBC. Then we took out additional 15% because there's an unoccupiable area, unknown area, like um, desk, uh, chairs, and other things. So we took out additional 15%. And the last factor we considered was people, some people doesn't want to stay on refuge floor. Some people just keep going down to stay and then go out to the building. So based on human behavior research and some paper, some, there's some intent, people who in the higher level, they are willing to stay refuge floor. But people who in the lower portion, they're trying to get out the building. So we distribute those analysis 10% to 100% throughout the building. So finally, we have uh, those numbers from the 85% of the total occupant load. And we applied horizontal exit concept and small compartment concept in the IBC to have the areas is 2.8 square meter per person, which is approved by Korean government. So 
s o m e for now, s o m e look at how it will be provide that area as a refuge to accommodate people from above the refuge floors. The new features of the high-rise building is evacuation elevator. We call light bolt. How it works is people at the top or anywhere using stairs and go to refuge floors and using the elevator shuttle and from to down. It's called light bolt system. The Lotte Jamshil Tower, we have a 17th light bolt provided. Busan Lotte Town, a little bit different. They're using local elevators as a means of egress as well. So total 15 light bolts and 21 local elevators provided. Then smoke controls. Smoke control is the key item to uh, achieve fire life safety goal in the high-rise buildings. And this picture shows this atrium in the, the main, main floor in the Lotte Jamsil Super Tower. The architect is very, they're focusing on this atrium. So, and as a consultant, we are, we have a goal. We have a goal to provide a tenable environment for the building occupants to evacuate. There's a, we assume there are fire in the B1 level. This is HDM open B1 to 8th floor. So the tenability conditions are examined at the ceiling height of 6.5 feet and 2 meters above the highest working space. In this case, the highest working surface in the atrium is on the second level, which is 4.5 meters above the ground floor. And the tenability criteria was referred from SFP handbook. And temperature, 42.5 Celsius, and visibility over 10 meters, and carbon monoxide less than 500 ppm. Then another important factor to do smoke control is design fire because the bigger side, the bigger fire and produce more the smoke. So the IBC allows only lower fire hazard use in the atrium. So there are only limited amount of fuel load expected and present that atrium space. And also we use a cloud and gym milk keys, the smoke management books. So our analysis is based on three mega fire. And also we did it additional scenarios for five mega fire just to confirm our approach, our proposed the fan size is works or not. At the same time, we do egress simulation to see a tenable, tenable conditions. So it shows the fire in the B1 and um, smoke stir and uh, fill out the outside of the atrium. And this orange thing is fan locations. So at 800 sec, without smoke control, as you see, the smoke going down is all the way down. And given a smoke control system, you see the smoke less way different as with our smoke control system. The result is more than 20 minutes, the tenable condition is maintained a given the size of the fan we estimated. And also egress time is, we, we had uh, two different scenarios on a medium cloud, which is 0.5 meter per sec, and high cloud, 0.2 meter per sec. So in those cases, and seven, between egress time is 7.5 minutes to 11.8 minutes. Then the benefit we brought to the project 
is efficient smoke control system in achieving fire and life safety goals, and minimum architectural design changes, then successful coordination with architect and mechanical engineers. It was challenging to coordinate with the mechanical engineers because the given the complexity, there are so many conflict, the locations of fan, the duct work, with so many discussions, so many meetings, then to achieve fire life safety goal and mechanical goal, so finally we uh, worked that out. Next item is egress simulations. The, the consideration and assumption what we did on egress simulation is the goal of the egress modeling is to analyze the range of egress time on the different egress scenarios and cloud conditions. And the entire building is evacuated and the exiting of all floors starts simultaneously. It was assumed that there is no phased exiting or additional pre-movement delay. Designated evacuation elevators were included in the egress system like I showed previously in a light bulb system. And also all persons are considered as ambulatory adults. Disabled people are not included in this simulation because the disabled people will be evacuated separately with the fireman's lift. For the Jamshil Lutes Tower, the photo egress scenarios that consider the use of both egress, elevators, and stairs. There are some distribution at the refuge floors. We assign the people using a percentage. So as you see the table, for example, the first, the upper level, level one, two, one, two, three, we put 50% using stairs and 50% using elevators. But there's one important thing we should know. It should be noticed that the distribution selected is for comparing purpose and should not be considered an optimized arrangement. To have optimized arrangement, it needs to be more than 100, 100 scenarios. And also two types of crowd condition is assumed, that high crowd condition which is 0.2 meter per sec along stairs and 0.5 meter per sec on the floors, and medium cloud and 0.5 and stairs, 0.6 floors. And as a general reference, ambulatory person can typically travel at the speed approximately one meter per sec. It's for SFP handbook. So I just make speed fast and people at the front top to um, using um, stairs and you see a, you see a Dan O'Connor shows this the simulation before. As you see um, the refuge floor, I just want to show how the light boat works. Then you'll see here's an um, elevator coming down, an elevator coming up. So this simulation all incorporate with elevator evacuation and stairs. So the result, as I emphasized previously, this is not an optimized evacuation time that building. We just provide arrangement of egress time at the worst, at the best. So in this case, more than four hours using only stairs, then 0.2 meter per sec. And the best result is about 145 minutes, you stair and elevators, like a 50 and 50s. This is Busan Rute Town, egress simulation. This picture just shows the people in start movement and f after the whole egress, the 
to buildings. It's the same thing, people are moving simultaneously and it's barely see the white thing up and down, that is elevators. Then Busan Lotte Town is similar. We have our arrangement, the evacuation time about one and a half hour to four and a half hours, different conditions. And just for example, to compare purpose in Shanghai Finance Center, only using stairs and one ten minutes, then using stairs and uh, shuttle lift. It's about 70 minutes. It's just for comparing purpose. The features for evacuation success um, for the building is if there's a fire on some, for example, hotel, then we do have two hour, regist two hour fire compartmentation and three hour structure frame. And also we have a reliable sprinkler system then clear communication system. So it doesn't need to be all people evacuate at the same time. So if there's fire, we send a signal to fire flow and flow above and flow below. Then fire command center for that hotel, then train the staff and see what's going on and then they'll take care of this thing first. And if this is significant fire and the something and the entire evacuation is necessary, they connect all fire command center and the main command center and the basement and they make the entire building out. So in the occupant have option to evacuations for their fire register and stair protect from smoke by pressurization and also refuge areas and protect the firefighter elevator lobby you know, dis for the dis disabled people. The last item I just bring up is, is still being discussed, but to be, I mean, keep going discussion items. Hoist way, the, the protection of hoist way using being used elevators. So there are two ways to pressurize hoist way and to pressurize the elevator lobby or provide elevator lobby itself. So there are pros and cons doing pressurizing hoist way, pressurizing lobby. The current in the US, there are committee talking about this thing. So maybe next year, maybe it'll come out in the, in the book. I don't want to get detail about what, it, what we did, but this is just an item to be discussed and to be finalized in the future. And that's it for my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I think these have all been very interesting, thought-provoking uh, 